Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. As a special gift to every viewer on YouTube, there is a link in the description to apply for a free breakthrough trading strategy session with myself. What does that mean? Alex created a free trading course for beginners and at the end of it, we will be selecting a few non-members to get on the phone with myself, Tosh, T Bradley 90 to help with your trading. Click the link in the bio, watch the video and apply today. Now, while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. All right, guys, official, um, official launch of week nine uh, Q&A for MIC, uh, the new member orientation webinar every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Q&A is live. Let's record this. Um, are they as important for a long? Oleg, yes, we were just talking about for the recording. We were just talking about hard stops. Are they important? Yes. I don't care what side you're on, long or short. Hard stops are a must. They are a must. And the, the reason why they're a must for me in life and death is because I don't like nursing a position every day anymore, man. I really don't like sitting in front of screens every second of the day. And also, I love helping members. Here's the thing. I am a very emotional trader. I, I'd be the first guy to admit that. I know many traders um, you know, way better than me that make like $4 million a year. And even they would say they're emotional as hell. So you don't have to punish yourself because you're an emotional person. If you're an emotional person, I, look, I don't know how you're going to get over that. You know, Alex, for the love of God, is like one of the most unemotional traders I've ever met in my life. That guy has the most steady hand. He's like, a, he's got like knives for hands. That freaking kid, man. I don't know how he does it. So here's the thing. I'm not going to try to beat Alex. I'm going to try to be the best version of me. I'm, I'm probably borderline a little bit ADD. I'm all over the place. I'm, you know, sometimes my discipline goes out the window. But here's the thing. I set a hard stop. I get to walk away. I don't have to nurse every tick because here's what would happen when I'd obsess over tape all day. Dude, the slightest big order or even some bid propping is going to get me out sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm human. It's going to happen. Just like anybody and specifically who's emotional, you know? I can't even trade after a day of fighting with a girlfriend or, you know, like a, like a fight with a family member. Like, like you, you'll bring this into trading. So you have to set up ways to stay safe. And the number three ways to stay, to stay safe are a max loss on the day. Call your broker up, have them cut you off at a certain point. And lastly, hard stop. So I can't speak, you know, more highly of them or, or on that subject enough, but you guys got to protect yourself. Risk management is the number one thing in trading. So you know, this is how I would do it. You know, th this is a great example. These are what I look for every day. I look for a stock that is up, up, up all day. And then around this time, 11 Pacific Standard Time. So, you know, 247 Eastern Standard Time, but within this time frame. So like 11 or 12 my time, right? So 2 p.m. to like 3 Eastern Standard. I'm waiting for a massive high of day rejection like this just did. This is big, man. This was the stuff at high of day. So if that's high of day, look what happens. I use... I use three minute charts, obviously. You don't have to, you don't have to. I just think it's very, I think it's very clear. It eliminates a lot of noise. And here's what happened. We get a stuff back down and then we get a massive slam through VWAP at the time that is this pertinent time for end of day give backs. If this was not a nano float, I would be slamming the shit out of this pop right here. I'd be scaling this entire move um, and with a hard stop. Uh, because this is so much range, I would not have given a hard stop all the way up here, but I would have given a hard stop probably 60% of the way through of the, of the line. So if I would have hit right here, theoretically and realistically, if I would have started hitting, you know, right here at VWAP, because I like to pop back to VWAP and maybe scaled up to this line, you know, I got a hard stop here, guys, set. I'll change the color. This is what a hard stop would look like. And then boom, like I can walk away. If it goes past this line, I get to walk away and be, you know, scot-free and, and unemotional and then ride this down and hopefully, you know, get some fantasy covers down here. I don't know, maybe swing it if I have an unbelievable average. But again, this is a nano float, so I'm not hitting this. These are part of my rules. The only thing that separates us from the animals is rules. <laughs> so, uh, God, I can talk about this all day, man. I do every week, man. I do every week. You guys got to shut me up already. <laughs> What do you got? Does anybody have any questions? We got a ton of people in here. Does anybody have specific questions or do you want me to talk about anything specifically? Um, Brian, can you show us again how to get the documents? For example, the bull versus bear factors. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Brian, scroll all the way to the top. Check this, buddy. 
Uh, bullish and bearish checklist right here. Download that uh, pre-market game plan, MIC starter pack, uh, TOS script if you want with custom bow, bow, uh, bow audio. That's a tongue twister. Um, and uh, download a report card. It's all in here, buddy. Just scroll up to the top. But we got a, we got a ton of stuff in the new member channel. So you'll get access to all of this if you guys become a member. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no problem, man. If you come in late, I totally understand. That's no problem at all. Not everybody sees the link in time. <laughs> Damn, I just got some new coffee. And this is the first cup that I'm having out of it. And it is, it is freaking good. <laughs> so as you guys can all sleep well at night, knowing that I got some better coffee than I had before. All right, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? How'd you guys do today? Uh, does anybody have questions about how do you scale out when you say, um, when you scale and say three parts? Well, here's what I do, George, if I'm saying that right. Um, I am, let me expand this a little bit. I am a very interesting trader in the sense that I do the same thing every day if I'm in a stock and I'll show you what it is. I like to write a core all day, man. I really do. So check this, but I like to be safe about it. And I'm only going to ride that core all day. If I have a bit of a cushion, you know, Bao taught me, um, in coaching, you know, a year or two years ago when we first started talking, God damn. Okay. I don't know why this isn't, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, I only use TOS for charting. You guys, please use DOS. TOS is shit. Don't trade on TOS. They're, they're not for trading. They're not for shorting. Uh, this is really just for charting. And sometimes even this is a pain. I'm kidding. I, I've been using DOS for probably four years now. And I'm probably just going to make the full jump. But check this out. So if I am scaling, brother, here's what I do. And I just kind of showed it, but I'll show it again. So if I get in a stock, I wait for my entry signal, whatever that is. This is my entry signal. So I am scaling say three parts, right? I'm putting an order here. I want to hit just under VWAP. That's what I usually do on VWAP and just over. That's usually what I would do. I would scale this move. And usually stocks would have a lot less range than this. But again, you know, because this is so much range, you're going to need to size down. So how am I going to go about scaling out, right? So that's how I'd scale in, but how do I scale out? So say my hard stop was obviously, uh, I set a hard stop on every trade. So say it was, I would probably... If I gave it that much, I, yeah, man, I do it about half the death candle line, right? Like just over, like I can't be, I can't just keep scaling and scaling and scaling. You know, that's, that's just ridiculous. But again, everything is boiled down into lines. You know, where are major supports? Where are the whole dollar numbers? See how that's a 10? See how this is a 1050 and 11? So these are really important levels, man. These are really important lines. You need to pay attention to these whole and half dollar numbers. And also, you know, it's, there's no coincidence that they usually bounce off these levels. And then that's a, that's a support for the day. So I, so if this is my hard stop, you know, I'm just going to show you guys exactly what I'd be thinking literally is taking this trade. And I thought about it, but again, it's a micro and I don't trade micro. So again, you, all we have is our rules. So if that's my stop, these are my three scale ins, which that would usually, that's exactly what it would look like. Um, I'm taking the first wash. The first wash, brother, to cushion myself. So, oh, sorry, let me. So that those are my scales. This is my first cover. Every time I take the first wash, and I take half off. So you gotta understand. But here's what I do specifically. Because this hard stop is in, I can now bring this hard stop down to my average. So say that's my average, and here's what I do. So this is no longer valid. I don't like this hard stop anymore. I'm cushioned. So now, because I got a base hit, I am now going for semi home run. Maybe I'm looking for, so because I got the, you know, baseball analogy, because I got the single, now I'm going to see if I can stretch this single into a double, a third, you know, a triple play, you know, whatever. Like I'm going to try to go to third base. I'm going to even try to get a home run at this. And depending on the range and if there's meat to come down, and there is on this, I just wish the float was bigger. So here's what I do this is my first cover. I'm probably writing half now, right? So. I am going to take off these and set fantasy, very unrealistic fantasy covers. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like right here, because that's also, you know, a major consolidation area. And I like to go within the consolidation area, not the bottom, not the top. I like kind of like the middle and it goes to a full and half dollar number. So I'm probably going to put it here. Then I'm going to put another one, probably, uh, like I said, very unrealistic. Maybe that's a swing position. So this is how I do it, man. And here's the thing. What I'm riding, this is called a core position. So if this were to pop back up here, then sure, I would add back up to my average because I'm literally just putting the size that I wanted on, but at my same average. So if it rips against, my risk is almost nothing. Do you understand? I'm cushioned. 
So if it goes above and I lose a little money, bro, I'm still in the green or I'm break even. And I don't give a shit about a break even trade, man. The, the, like that, that's no problem. You know what I mean? Like as long as you cushion yourself first, and usually my entries are pretty good. So I get that first cushion and then I can swing for the fences if I want to, but I teach new traders to, you know, just go after base hits. So what I do, and then I set these and if I get them, I get them. If I don't, then guess what? I stop out even on the rest of my position. And then that's that, but that's how I trade. It's very different from a lot of traders. So that's up to you to decide. Uh, but you asked and I just showed you how I do it. <laughs> So ideally, ideally these become, these get hit, these get hit. You know what I mean? And then here's the thing. I can keep bringing down my stop, man, wherever I want. Like, dude, it, I'm telling you, man, it's like prop firm style trading. Uh, yeah, no problem. Mize, what's up, buddy? I know you. Uh, do you think in terms of risk reward or do you just go line to line? You know what, man, when I first started, and I think that most of you guys should honestly focus on is, is this a three to one trade? Is this a two to one? Is this a one to one? Is this a one to seven? You know what I mean? Like what kind of trade am I taking? Uh, but nowadays all I do is see in lines that, well, lines and candles, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a very, very, very big candle player. So uh, that correlates to volume and stuff mode. So, you know, I love candles, man. I'm looking for the death candles all day. I'm looking for these big, really important candles at certain points. Um, and then I'm going line to line, of course. So, you know, let's go live, right? So this was a great short this morning, right? Dow nailed the short. Actually, let's pull that up. I want to show a good example of this because this is, this is, this is what's called outer line, guys. Check this out. Um, was this it? Yeah, it was. Uh, I think... I want to see the whole chart. Now, I think you posted that whole thing somewhere. <clears throat> Hold on, guys. I want to see if I can find Bao's whole chart on this. I think he posted the whole chart. Be cool to see. <clears throat> well, he definitely took, there, there, there it is. Uh, he definitely tweeted it somewhere, but I'm, I'll just use this, right? So this is Bao's chart of OPGN today, right? Bao is very, very big into hitting like this is inner and outer lines so if you guys were to draw inner and outer lines check this out so say we're we'll say we're going live right so we're going to line this is what you see pre-market the, the open hasn't even happened yet this shaded area is it's just pre-market that's why i like tos that i'm so used to seeing this shaded area if dos gets shaded area i'm, I'm never looking at tos again <laughs> but see this is an inner line this is an outer line i like to use the um the bottom of the, the, I don't like the wicks, I like the, so you could theoretically obviously write a high a day line, but I really pay attention to the, the bases of the candles, whether that's the top of the base or the bottom of the base, but I like the bases because I think that's where the majority of the players are at, so I kind of like, you know, like right there. Um, so these are the lines I would draw for pre-market, maybe, maybe one right here, arguably, but no, because it's just kind of no man's land. I want to hit the most, again, the blackjack hand, right, like the 20 out of 20. So Look, dude, here's what Bao did. This is what he does. I'm going to show you in a nutshell of like one of the coolest things Bao does. When a top is formed, right? Like that's a top. This is a top. This is a top. This is a top. This is a top. He's paying attention to these levels. That is called resistance. There is a ton of topping action. So what's he doing? When it pops back up these levels, he's nibbling. He's throwing fishing orders out, right? This is called outer lines. He's scaling into the outer line. He's not hitting right here. He's not hitting right here. He's not. He's hitting on the pop. This is why he's the top tick king. I love this. You know, I do a lot of this too. So as you see, and then and then he covers, you know, and so he's shorter pre-market. Then when we came in the open, this is a huge strategy that we teach. And this is one of the best you can do with a new account. Again, I like the middle of the consolidation area. Look at this. This, oops, sorry, one sec. Uh, let's go, let's go five. Boom. And let's go a different color. Let's go green, right? This is the first balance area, man. Like, like I would like, you got to give yourself some room sometimes because you can't always just top ticket. But like, this is what I would look for in like the first balance area. I really would. And then it correlate, well, just under the, yeah, the 50 level, right? The whole and half dollar number. So I would, you know, I like this area and look what Bao does. He longs it and then sells and then he really shorts because again, where did it go? into if you would have shorted right here you would have been squeezed you wait for these outer lines bro that's where it matches up with the previous tops do you see this this is not rocket science this is line to line that we teach 
dude, this is teachable, this is identifiable. Again, where are you lining up? If you're starting a position right here, then you can scale and weather this move. But if you're starting here at an inner line, you can't do that. So here's another thing. Again, line to line, right? So let's do this concept real quick. I'm gonna walk you through this, just one good example. So you know what, and we do this every day at MIC, man. I was always posting charts, telling you where the levels are. If these are the resistance levels, these are the support levels, right? You just fucking color coordinate them on your charts, man. Trading is not easy, but it is simple, man. Simplify it for yourself. You know, these are inner lines. I don't want these inner lines. I want these outer lines, baby. And then you can change them, you know, just make them look different, boom. Make them look like this, like make your outer lines look, um, you know, serrated or whatever. Look, outer lines look different, right? So you can categorize, whatever. Uh, I don't know why that didn't change. All right, this one's not changing one sec. Son of a bitch. Bear with me. Oh, I think I got a ton of lines here. Hold up. Yep, there we go. So boom. So there are my lines, right? Those are my outer lines. I want to scale into those. These are iffies, you know, if I'm really feeling it. But again, you know, 2020 blackjack hand, man, hit up here. You could have scaled all these pops if you were if you were scaled smaller. And then guess what? When it does break the range consistently, yeah, you cut it and you have a hard stop in place. So line to line, right? If you're hitting, you know, a line in the open right here, like the most innermost line, you are going to short right here because it's a line. It is a line. But here's the thing: not every line is super important. Or you know, again, the the best blackjack hand you can get. This is an inner line. This is an outer line. Here's what happens. You short this, you're dead. You short this, you have a much better odds of success. And here's the thing. Because there is a lot of room between this, if you do short here, stop out quickly with tight risk, and then again, attack, attack at these outer levels. This is what's called line to line. You're going, oh, this line didn't work. Let's go to the next line. Do you see what I'm saying? I can't give away too much of this stuff. I'm literally like giving away a lot of good stuff. But again, line to line. Oh, so remember I draw those? So now it's gonna see how it's gonna operate at these levels. I wanna see, man, I wanna see. This is, this, is, this is a very key place to support, man. This is fucking key, dude. You know, so watch how, you know, watch how it bounces off this, man. These are, this is, you know, not a bad first, well, it's not a first bounce. This is a total breakdown in my opinion, but it could jump off the support. This is no man's land in my opinion. It would really have to break like 925 for me to even be attempted for a death line. Like I would think that this would be a good death line. You know, not every death line is gonna be 100% accurate, but again, I like this for a death line. So, no, be careful, guys. As you guys can kind of see how we kind of track all this. So, uh, let me go back to the questions. I'm totally rambling. I just wanted to kind of show you guys inner outer lines. And I just kind of want to show you guys what we look for every day um, and stuff like that. But again, yes, the R and R setups, my. So, you know, the inner lines, man. That's like a it's a one to one setup, man. Wait for that. It's a three to one. You know, every single outer line they got. It's just it was. And you could have scaled every single pop. Again, I would have if it was a bigger float, but I'm, I don't trade nanos. But it's great for uh, this. This example is fantastic for just this webinar and talking theoretically and generally for uh, price action and patterns and understanding how charts move and how these stocks move, man. I mean, there's a reason why these things do this, there's a reason for everything. Uh, oh, here's another one. Like this was a check this out, man. ELTK. I loved this. Do you think this is a freaking coincidence, man? Where are the tops? Major top. Major top. Where the hell on this day would it be good to short into? These major tops. Wait for these. Wait for these. This is where you want to hit. These are the golden setups. You don't want to hit you know, here and here, and because it can run to here, man. Like you want, <laughs> you want these areas. <laughs> I swear to God, this is not rocket science, man. I can't say it enough. Lines, baby. I hope this is clear, guys. I'm totally rambling. Uh, Subtosh, would you consider uh, tomorrow ABEO as still low hanging fruit? Uh, if you would consider scaling the stock or gap or gap down, uh, ABEO. Here's why I wouldn't look at it personally, but let's see. Oh. Uh, who asked that? Uh, but Sam, what's up, buddy? Nice to see you, man. Thanks for joining. I do not like day three plays. So yes, this can absolutely be categorized as a low hanger tomorrow. You know, there is still some, there is still some people underwater from this day two action. I mean, it really did get, it sold off. But again, you know, there's people from here 
and here they could be underwater tomorrow depending on where this closed and if it gaps down here you know it might be all of that so the whole point though is i don't like day threes because day one of a move is really like i know obviously there's a ton of you know faders and whatever but day one is really for longs that is the day for longs day two is really for the shorts i mean just generally speaking on a very general basis day three is kind of a crapshoot anything can happen because while day one is day is longs day two is where all this selling pressure kind of you know gets out of the balloon right like if you if you pop a balloon and it doesn't explode in your face but it you know just filtered or, or a tire you you uh throw a screwdriver into someone's tire overnight it's gonna it's gonna bleed out air depending on the hole right all this selling pressure kind of comes out day two so for day three you know it's it's uh, i just don't like them man my my number one setup is backside death lines of day ones you know like if this like if this was a death line right here and the stock came crashing down here late day maybe i'm hitting that or day two i wanted this today but it didn't pop up to where i wanted i wanted my first orders to be up around here and uh uh, what was what was the uh, red to green? I think it was just under three. So I think the red to green line was just like literally like right uh, there, right? Uh, I think it was right there. So if this say this was red to green, I wanted at least this. I had I had orders like this. I just I, I honestly had them just sitting out like this. I had and they didn't get filled. These are what's called fishing orders. I walk away from my computer, see if I get filled. This is where I want it to scale, you understand? And then honestly, I, I actually really like this line, so I would have, hit, oh, hold on one sec. I would have today if it ran up. So say, you know, I put some orders here, and then boom, it rushes through. This is the next line I'd scale. So I'd hit a little bit here, you know? I'd see how I can, uh, I could see how I'd attempt here, because this, this is some good topping action each time it failed. Uh, but again, line to line, you know? I'm not trying to hit here. I'm not trying to hit in the middle. I, I want to hit these tops. Uh, but, you know, red to green and previous high day are great examples for level two. I, uh, or uh, day two, I do not like day three. I, I just really don't, man. I really don't like. Uh, oh, thank you for that. <laughs> 294. Uh, I was just on it. Yeah, yeah there. Uh, I, I, I don't like day three, man. I really don't. Uh, and I think the I think the best odds for success, bro. I, I really do, especially for new traders or anybody trying to find consistency, is stick with day one, man. Stick with day one first bounce and stick with day two low hanger shorts, which we teach. These are all dude. These are these are all patterns, man. I'm racing, man. I just had a coffee, man. You should see me off coffee. I'm I'm energetic, but goddamn, if I have a coffee, it's it's a shit show, man. So bear with me, guys. I'm like a bear with a beaver tranquilizer and he's not going down uh tom what's up buddy uh met you in philly man great guy man you know what's so cool about tom guys is tom is the perfect example of you don't have to you can be any age trade you don't have to be 18 or 24 or 29 like me dude you can be any age trade tom i think you're in your 60s pal or something dude he's He's doing great, man. Like, I love that, man. I you can do this forever, guys. Like, you learn how to trade right now at 25. Imagine how legendary you're going to be. Oh, shit, Tom. <laughs> He's 76. That is the coolest shit, dude. Dude, Tom's trading at 76 years old. How sick is that? Tom, what's up? Dude, you inspired. Alex, that would be us, dude. <laughs> Alex, we'll get there, bro. We'll get there. Tom, Tom's trail, he's trailblazing, man. I love it, dude. I love it. Still learning and still watching webinars at 76, man. That is what it's all about, man. That is what it's all about. I love it. Um, <laughs> you must be sick in the head, pal. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let me get through these. Um, uh, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, what was your question, Tom? Can we access this chart portion as a recording? Um, I, to answer your question tom which i think i'm answering yes this is recorded so if you wanted to watch this back yeah for sure brother i'm i will post this like later today or tomorrow or something um but sim for sure makes sense thanks for the detail absolutely jonathan how do you determine the bias great question it's very general question but i'm gonna tell you something it's a fantastic question and here's how i do trend 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 trendy trend is this oh, let me trend line is this a short? Not yet. Not yet. I like true backside and I like death lines. Where's my death line? I'm going to draw it pre-market. I like, I, you know, I give myself a little bit more room. I, this is a death line. 
until this, so if this stock would have opened up and just started tanking under here, I still see some room. So if the five minute, you know, I see room of downside. You see what I'm saying? But until it's over this, it is a front side trade for me, brother. So I am not looking to trade this on the short side. And that is how you form an immediate bias. Now, um, what was an example? A, um, what's the best example today that was just true backside? I think CDTX, right? This was the best example. Look at this thing, man. Look at this. So this was a low hanger that I had my orders out. Again, it didn't fill. I was bummed. It just died right out of the gate. I wanted this to pop up to like right here, man. I really wanted, oops. I really wanted this stock like right here, but here's the point. This stock is dead. This is trending down bag holders from day one. It's just lower eye, lower, literally like the bouncing ball analogy. You know, momentum and inertia are gone and gravity has taken full effect. Boom, boom, boom. Now, this is what's called a continuation play. When you hear the word continuation play, you go, what did that mean? What does that mean? It's a continuation of trend. This stock, is ugly. This stock is beaten down. This stock is dead in the water, man. In day one, what do you think is going to happen day two? Look at this trend. So again, we can go live with it, right? Like we can go live. So check this. I am looking to short this. I would never long this shit. So let's go live. This is live pre-market right before the open. Now I'm placing my lines. Where are my ideal lines? You know, then I just draw my lines. I would have loved to hit it right here and scale through here because here's a great tip. This is what I use daily. Not only do I use tops, check this. So this is how I play day twos. I'm looking for tops, of course. I'm looking for a major consolidation area on day one that correlates also to a lot of volume that is stuck that is going to want to get out. I would like to scale this entire area, give myself some room. That's where I'd be scaling. Maybe even a little bit higher, like up to maybe even, maybe even, Maybe even right there. I, I like this. I want this volume to come out. So if it pops back up there, bag holders are going to want out. Again, look at the difference, right? CDTX is dead from day one. The trend is down. OPGN today. Oh, man. Nice. Nice candle. Wow. Uh, look at this. It's just, it's up, dude. Who's underwater? Like a little bit of guys, dude. This thing's up from freaking 650 or whatever, you know, 660. Uh, this move started, and now it's hitting a high of 12. You know, yeah, there's a little bit underwater if you chase the top top. But again, I'm not looking to top tick all day. I'm looking to get a good meat of the move, and that's down here in the depth line. I don't need to top tick, man. Top ticking is cool, but guess what? You know what's cooler? We're making money every single day because you have a proven system, a proven strategy. And dang, as I told you, I told you earlier, this is what I would have done. This is what I do every single day. I mean, it's, I basically called it live. And of course, <laughs> I guess sound like a total guru right now because I'm not in it. But I, told, I showed you live exactly what I would have done. I would have had my covers in the exact area. Another cover, cover would have gotten triggered at the 950. Remember I said in the consolidation level. So this is my entry for getting in. I showed you as almost as soon as it happened. I'd scale this pop, have my hard stop, and then cover as I go, lower my stop. It's simple, man. Trading is not easy, but it's simple. <clears throat> nah, yes, yes. Let's see, Ryan. Nice, buddy. Look at this, dude. He plays totally similar to me. I love it, man. See this, guys? Look at this, man. Get the confirmation, the high day stuff, the death candle. I think, yeah, that's your first order. Am I correct, Brian? Right there. Boom. He's covering down here. Nice hold, bro. Nice. This is the tax man. The tax man in action. <laughs> dude, the tax man can trade. Oh shit, look at this. Oh my God, this thing is dead. This thing is fucking dead, dude. Oh, I'm so, I'm so tempted. Oh my God, that's a death line breach and that is not only a breach, that is a death slam. That's gone, dude. This thing is, oh, short pops. Oh God. No, I'm gonna stick to my rules. I'm sticking to my rules. No, no, I don't trade nanos because here's the thing. I, I'm just too many years in nano, nano trading, man. This thing rips and then it halts again and then you're dead. But had this been a 4 million or overflow, I, oof, God, that is beautiful though. And again, I would have gotten in right here. I do daily. This is my, this is my entry signal. High day stuff, uh, high day stuff, death candle slam through BWAP, boom, I'm scaling this pop for orders and entries right here. I'm scaling out impartials on major washes and specifically around uh, whole and half dollar numbers. I don't think I would have made it down here. There's no way. 
I do like to hold all day at least a little bit, even if it's just 10% of my trade or my core position. But again, guys, that's, that's total guru saying I'd cover all the way down here. That's a fucking move. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm no, I don't know. Uh, but I am telling you, I do, I, I am pretty good at holding. So, man, that, that, that's just nasty. But again, you know, we teach these things, man. That's a very identifiable setup. It's breaking these necklines on the way down. It's breaking death lines. Uh, that's pretty, man. That's pretty. Is everybody still here following me? <laughs> Don't follow my commentary. Don't follow my trades. I'm going to whoop your digital ass if you do. <laughs> do not. I, I, this is not a pump and dump room. We don't pump shit. We don't. If we do alert, it's, it's for thought process. We're not necessarily alerting you where we're getting in exactly. We're, we're teaching you at MIC how to trade and what to look for. We are not going to give you alerts. If you're here for alerts, you're at the wrong place. We're here to teach you how to be a self-sufficient trader and, and, and how to identify these things every single day. Oh, man, but how cool is that? You just keep lowering your stop, man. Just keep lowering your stop. Walk away. The reason, actually, yeah, see, it makes it sound all good, like I'm a fucking hero and everything, like, oh, yeah, man, I would have covered down here. The only reason why I do is because I'm so emotional, I got to set fucking hard stops and then walk away from my computer so I'm not watching the stock. So my fantasy orders are usually, you know, in really unrealistic places, but, like, here's the thing, guys, if they get filled, I wasn't even watching it, so there was no emotion. I walk away, I get a smoothie, I focus on members, I'm on mobile. I do, you got to do what you got to do to stay safe, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. <clears throat> Who's got some questions? What else? What'd you guys trade? Does anybody have any questions about low hangers, uh, day ones? Uh, does everybody know about here? Let me just, if you are new and have no idea where to start and um, when it comes to like data and stuff, if you guys are not familiar with Finviz, I suggest that you very much look into it today. Uh, Finviz is awesome. Check this. Oops. It's just they got a billion ads, so you got to, oh, like, it uh, looks like I'm going to Air Italy, you know? Like, every time you come here, you're like, oh, my God, what are they going to get me with today? Freaking Finviz is a used car salesman. So, uh, OPGN, man, you type this in. You got all the data, man. You got news down here, very important news. Uh, you got progressive insurance, if you need progressive. Uh, insider ownership, you know, institutional ownership, guys, to find float, check the filings for exact float, you know, um, you can even see how many employees they have. I forgot to say 50 employees. I like to see companies with like three or four employees. And I'm like, oh, wow, you really are shit. <laughs> you know, there's so many ways to form a bias. But uh, when it comes to fundamentals, uh, what your question was right here, Phil, what's your approach to fundamentals and how do they impact your trading decisions? I am very lax when it comes to fundamentals. I don't like to form too much of a bias. But again, I'm not one of those guys that avoids it completely. I like to know if they have active shelves. I go to... What's next on the list is BAM SEC. Let me show you guys uh, BAM SEC. I want to see if they have active shelf, right? And I want to see how far back they have them. Uh, I'm going to peruse this really quick. I'm going to see what they got. You know, I'll type in OPGN, you know, uh, is it, do they have an effect? Things like that. So, you know, check out these kind of things. And, you know, that's how it is. But I'm, I'm very lax on fundamentals. I really am. I'm a technical trader, man. I like candles. I like blinds. And uh, I trust the lines, you know, I trust my candles. I place so much importance in candles, I might name my first baby candle. I don't know. Candle Bradley. Oh, but then I'd have to call him like Death Candle Bradley, and that's just bad. Maybe high of day stuff, Bradley. How's that sound? Uh, but yeah. So as you guys can see, man, there's, there's just a lot of cool stuff. We talked about lines, say we talked about uh, hard stops. We talked about, you know, death lines. We talked about, you know, scaling, uh, inner and outer lines, you know, risk reward. Uh, we talked about a lot of good topics today, guys. You know, volume is really key for me. I like to pay attention to volume. If you're not paying attention to volume, uh, we teach a lot on that and what to look out for. Um, BWAP reclaims, you know, how to stay safe on just price action alone, um, let alone using hard stops or max loss on the day. Look at this thing, man. This is the point, guys. This is the point of a death line. Look at this. This is the death line for me. You know, it might be a little different depending on the trader, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's my death line. And it was since this morning. I, some were saying nine. I like to give it a little above because again, guys, I don't like going by wigs. I really don't. I like going by bases of candles. So arguably, um, arguably, maybe right there. I'd say right there. 
Look how much downside once this breaks. Are you kidding me? That's a move. If you just waited all day for that, that's a 2020 blackjack hand, man. Look at that move. Even if you just caught this, that's a fucking move. That pays the bank. That lets you build accounts. So while you're getting chopped up in here and using inner lines and outer line, well, no, outer lines pretty much were spot on today. But if you're, you know, just doing like, oh, I need a little scalp. It looks like it's overview up, boom. And then it breaks and it looks like it's overview up, let's short. And then it boom, rips on you. Like, dude, just wait for the really, really, really good setups. The really identifiable setups that we teach, the curriculum, and yeah. Uh, hey, how about the new get it great? <laughs> I don't know what that means, 5-1, but it sounds funny, and I'm a goofy guy, so I, I feel it. Uh, but as you guys can see, man, so damn, I've been talking for a long time. You guys want to? You guys have any other questions, or I could wrap it up right here. I, I tend to give too much information on these free webinars every week. <laughs> I mean, imagine, guys, if you learned anything today. Imagine what you learned today. Imagine if you joined MIC and you get access to 450 videos. You get access to literally daily coaching, daily mentoring, daily phone calls. I mean, the sky's the limit, man. Like we take traders with even seven, 500 videos, guys, 500 videos. We, we've got traders and this is no shit. We've got traders, Tom Diesel, for God's sakes, who start off with like a $700 account, man. It, it doesn't matter how much money you have. This guy took it to, I'm not going to tell you what he, that's his business, but I'm going to tell you, man, he's like started from the bottom. Now Tom's here, man. This guy went parabolic. And just following the death line setup and the low hangers, and he's, he's like a total uh, short bias trader like myself, and we've got a ton of Tom Diesels, meaning like a ton of guys just come in, small accounts, big accounts, it doesn't matter. Trade right and the profits follow. If you don't even have access to shorts, guys, we're a 50-50 long and short, um, you know, biased chat. We, we don't have a bias either way. Yeah, I like to short, but guess what? Bow longs every day. Harry Haas longs every day. Even... Even Brian Long sometimes, like we have a trader for every play. Like Austin's a huge long trader. He's the guy probably capturing these big squeezes. You know what I mean? So while I'm shorting these, he's getting these. So again, we're gonna teach you how to play both sides of the equation. We're not we're not a short bias room, we're a we're a price action room. If the line says long, we're gonna long. If the line says short, it's a short. So um Yep, 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 yeah, feature. Yes, that's awesome as well. We have that. Um, one second. Um, I had a question about outer lines above. Oh, my, did I miss it, buddy? Uh, I don't. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Uh, would you avoid shorting an outer line if it is grinding towards it as opposed to a faster move towards the outer line? All depends, buddy. All depends on how much percentage the stock is up. If the stock is obviously not a nano float, and it's up a lot, like a shit ton, like 100, 200%. If it's grinding towards it, I may set smaller orders. I don't like grinding action as that can be algo driven and very manipulative price action. But again, a resistance is a resistance. So while I may size down and try it, yeah, I will. I mean, an outer line is an outer line, brother. And the resistance levels for a reason. So I may just be more cautious on something like that. But to avoid altogether and to say, hey, I don't, uh, I don't touch anything grinding. No, I wouldn't say that. That's, that's going too far to say. <clears throat> yep. So again, guys, what are you getting with MIC? Let's uh, let's do this real quick. Let me uh, let me wrap this up with our presentation here. What are you getting when you join MIC? Not only are you getting 500 course video lesson library, you're getting access to a team, not one guy who's very vague and gives some answers and maybe one word PMs or anything like that. We're, we're, guys, you got a team behind MIC that are going to help you. You've got 900 members in the after hours chat that you can post any fucking time of day. I, I, literally, we've got traders in Brazil. We've got traders here, you know, Norway. We've got traders in New York. We've got New Mexico. We, guys, we've got traders everywhere. So anybody's going to be awake during any time frame. And yeah, right? Like they look like this, right? This is obviously not a, you know, like a like a world map or anything, but this is like, if this was, this is where traders are, they're fucking everywhere. So as you can see, we're unpolished, we're real guys, we talk real, I mean, I even swear like Val sometimes, like we're real guys, man, and we're here to just, you know, we're here to just teach you and support you as best we can and the things that we've learned. Um, we have a new thing, guys, right now, if you are brand new, not a member, 
uh, go right here, apply now for a free trading session. Go to um, www.alextomiz.co, you know, sign up, get on a call, uh, get a trading session, see what MIC is all about. Um, and we got a new webinar, so, you know, check it out, man. And I'm telling you right now, like, you won't regret it. You know, MIC is a fantastic place. If anything, if you've been treading water and doing this alone, stop doing it alone, man. Join a community. And I'm not even saying MIC. I'm not even going to pressure or anything. It's not about that. But, you know, give a community a chance and see the positivity that members can do and the networking opportunities. I mean, even my investing club is so much more beyond stocks. I know real estate guys in here where I'm trying to learn real It's like, where do I put my, my, where do I put my gains, man? I'm trying to learn real estate as a freaking side passion, man. <laughs> I see, you know, those guys like, what, what is it? Anthony Cardone or Grant Cardone or whatever his name is. And I see these guys, I'm like, man, that'd be sick to own apartment buildings one day. Let me connect and help traders who need help in their trading. And they can simultaneously help me out with real estate information. I don't know shit about real estate. I don't know much. And it's, and it's a love of mine, just like trading is. And fuck, I got so much time in the world with trading that I can do that on the side, right? And you, I want you guys to get to a point where, you know, trading is the only thing you have to do. But if you want to do other things, you can network and meet people and shake this guy's hand. And if you guys are close, then go to an LA, you know, coffee shop, bring your laptops and, and meet a buddy, man. This, it, this, this industry is too isolated. And one of the number one things about the creation of MIC was to say, hey, guys, it doesn't have to be. And meet, meet your fellow trader, man. Um, it's just, it's just no fun alone, man. People are so cool. It's, it's fun to interact. And here's how to contact us guys. Let me go through this real quick. Uh, we got Twitter, my investing club, Instagram, my investing club as well. Uh, here's Alex's Twitter and, um, Instagram. Uh, here's, here's bows. Um, here's my email, Tosh at my If you have anything you need to get a hold of me for, you know, whether it's, um, let me go back to new member just in case someone's saying some stuff. If you guys have, you know, questions about anything, signing up, if you guys have questions about upgrading to annual or lifetime, if you have concerns, you know, suggestions, whatever it is, guys, shoot an email to me. I'll see it. I've also got a guy to help me with email so we get through every single one. And we don't miss a beat, guys. So we listen to all the people who are interested. We, we want this to be the best community, as I think, and maybe I'm a little biased, but it, it is, man. Like, you are going to get a brotherhood, a family, and a team to help you out. This is not a one-show pony, you know, Bow's not better than Alex, Alex's not better than me, I'm not better than Brian, Brian's no better than Phil, you know, Phil's no better than Mize. Everybody is on the same level playing field and we're just doing the same thing every day to try to make money together, man, and support support one another. So, you know, that's how we that's how we get down to MIC, man, pure positivity. So, uh, a couple questions. Is Cobra application platform itself free or do I need to pay for their trading software and DOS? So guys, check this out. I'm going to open up a thread and I'm going to say contact Cobra right here. I'm going to tag him so you can DM him, Patrick, right here. I actually don't know the question. I don't know the answer to that question exactly. I think they have a free platform. I'm not sure. But again, I've never used free platforms. I've always paid extra for um, DOS or, you know, obviously if you go past a certain uh, share count, you get the platform for free, which is like DOS or Sterling. But um, I think DOS is the most professional platform there is. I'm a little biased. I love it so much. Um, I think it's so beautiful with the entries and exits. Um, and, uh, and you know, I mean, hit them up, hit them up, call them up, you know, DM them Our brokers in chat to answer any questions. Yeah. Uh, Brian, this is my first webinar, but you gave out some gold here today. The info with line placement was awesome. Thanks. Brian, I'm so, I'm so glad, man. Thanks for attending. Again, if you guys learned something today, man, this is nothing, man. We got so much more. So I'll wrap it up right here, guys, as I'm totally losing my voice. It's been a pleasure uh, hopefully helping you guys out today, showing you what we're all about. And you're in good hands, man. So come on down and contact any one of us if you need help, specifically myself, uh, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. And next week, I will have more Tory lanes for you as we'll do another recorded Q&A next week. So <laughs> see you guys. Stay safe. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com.
I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.